Welcome. In today's video, I will be showing you how to set up one of my projects called Web Portal, which is a dashboard web app that allows you to display links to all of your web services. The current version that we will be taking a look at is version 1.4. As you will see, we are at the repository page where the project code is located. Here, we can see a brief overview of the features this app currently offers, and we can also see a preview of what the app looks like. Let's now talk about some of the features this app currently offers. You access a grid of beautifully styled links to your selected web services. It has minimal use of JavaScript, which will provide a lightning fast experience on lower end devices. There are a wide range of colors that can be applied to the service links. It uses a modern icon based theme. A minimal Docker image is provided and is based on Alpine Linux. The site features a dark and light mode, which can be toggled between. Links can be put into groups, which allow for organization. An optional search bar can be enabled for quickly accessing your search engine of choice. An optional compact view can be enabled for those with lots of service links. Password protection is used for the admin interface. You can optionally secure the web portal with user accounts and passwords if you don't want the links to be publicly viewable. Here is the demo image for a running instance of Web Portal, which shows the dark and light theme. OK, now with the intro out of the way, let's move on to installing it. In this video, I'll be showing you how to install it using Docker. It can be installed without Docker, however, there's no official guide for that. We will first need the Web Portal Docker image, which is currently pre built on the GitHub container registry. In this video, I'll be using Docker Compose which will allow us to easily pull the image and run as a container. There is an example Docker Compose file in the repository, so we can just copy that and modify some of the configs. First, we will create a directory to store our Docker files in. I will call mine Web Portal. Then we can navigate into that folder. Now we can download the Compose file. First, we can navigate to the repository page and navigate to the docker-compose.yaml file. Then we can click on the raw button and copy that link to the clipboard. I'll then use wget in the terminal to download the file. You can of course use any method you want to get the config file. OK, now we have our compose file, we need to make some changes to it before we can run the docker compose command. I will be using vim, feel free to use whatever text editor you want. The first change is to set the secure secret key. Make sure to change this to something secure and random. Don't use the default one. We can do this by changing the environment variable called secret key. I'll set mine to something random. Also, I'd like to point out, don't also use my one in this video. I will also add a search engine config so we can test the search feature. I will use Google Search, most search engines should work. To configure this, we need to specify a new environment variable called search underscore URL. We can then set the value to the URL for the Google Search engine, as you can see here. For the database, we will need to set the db underscore URI variable. As you can see, the example config has already one set. I'm OK with using SQLite for this demo, however, you might want to change this to MySQL or MariaDB. If you do use SQLite, which is fine for production as long as you don't have lots of users, it will need a Docker volume mounted so our database is persistent as it's stored on a file. Take note of where the database file is being accessed, as your volume will need to be mounted to that folder. This example config uses slash data. This example also already has a volume set up called web portal, so we don't need to change anything. If you end up using one of the other database types, you can safely remove the volume settings. To expose the service so we can access it outside of the Docker container, it's recommended to use a reverse proxy such as Nginx. This would also allow us to secure it with SSL and allow for domain names to be used. 
As you can see, this example exposes port 8000, so we are not using a proxy. For an internal network, it should be okay as long as it isn't exposed to the internet and you trust the people on your network not to steal your passwords. If you want to use a different port, make sure to only change the left side, as the right side is the internal port of the container and this cannot be changed. There are other configs we could change, however, I'll not be showing them in this video. They are documented in the repository README under the config section. As we have finished configuring the config, we can write and quit. Okay, so now we have the configuration done, we can run it. We do this by using docker-compose-up-d. This will also download the image if none already exists on the system. This would also run the container in a detached state, so we can now safely close the terminal. To update the image, we would run docker-compose-pull and then docker-compose-up-d to start it again. Now we have the container running, let's open up a web browser and access the app, which will be the machine you're running it on, at port 8000, if you didn't change it. We can then log in using the default admin, username and password, which is admin admin. Now we're logged in, the first thing we should do is change the password. All settings can be accessed from the cog icon at the navigation bar at the top. To change the default password, we need to go into users, then scroll down to the change user password section. From there, we just need to select the user, which is admin from the drop down and then enter a new password and click on save. Now we can move on to adding a service to the dashboard. To do that, we need to go back to settings and select widgets. From there, we can look at the new widget section and enter the details. As an example, I will use the URL of my website which is https colon slash slash enchantedco.co.uk. Remember to provide the whole URL, otherwise it won't work. We then must give it a prefix. This is what will show up on the dashboard. I will use enchanted code. Then we need to set what group it will show up under. We can leave it at default as we haven't added any new groups. Lastly, we must set a color for the widget. I will choose blue. As you can see, there are quite a few options to choose from. Then we simply click save and our widget is added. Now that our service has been added, we can now navigate to the dashboard by clicking the house icon. If we click on the widget we just created, it will open up in a new tab. Now let's try out the search bar. It basically just sends a request to the search engine that you just selected. Let's try searching for GitHub. As you can see, we get the Google search page for the search query we entered. Navigating back to the web portal, we can change the site theme by clicking the sun and the moon icon. It currently has three options, OS, light and dark. The OS option will sync to the computer theme, which is currently set to dark mode. Let's have a look at the light mode. OK, let's now change it back to the dark mode. Ah, much better. Now, let me show you my own personal instance that I use on a daily basis. As you can see, there's lots of services that I run and they are all neatly placed in a grid. I also have my admin services separated into a different group. You would also see that the group headings are disabled on my instance, which I personally prefer. That is also documented in the configuration section of the readme. As you might see, I also have a HTTPS connection. This is because I'm using a reverse proxy. Okay. 
This is what I'm going to show you in this demo video. I hope you found this video of my web portal project to be useful. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more similar content. If you have any questions about this program, feel free to leave a comment on this video or on the discussion section on the repository page.